Ranjit. Ranjit. So we are already live. So with all your due permission, can we yeah. begin? Yeah, one minute. Yeah, sure. The slides are not there. Can can you share from your side? Slides. The slide is there, sir. Oh, some of the latter days the next. Yeah. Will you start? Yes, sir. So with all of your permission, we are beginning with the session for today. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. I would like to welcome all the viewers on our platform who have joined our platform for the better exchange of knowledge that is going to be shared by our keynote speaker, doctor, for today's session. And he's none other than Dr. M. Balasubramanian, sir, who is a very renowned veterinologist. With the help of sir, we'll be taking a close look on today's topic. But before moving on to today's topic, I would like to welcome Sir at our platform. He needs no introduction, but it is my pleasure to introduce him at our platform. Sir is MD, DV graduated and post-graduated from Madras Medical College, retired Deputy Director, Tamil Nadu State AIDS Control Society, former State Secretary, President and National Vice President of IMA. With the help of Sir, we'll be taking a close look on today's topic, which is oral manifestations in HIV. On the occasion of World Oral Health Day, we'll be knowing more about this topic. Before moving on to today's session, let us have a brief look on what the topic says. One of the earliest indicators of HIV infection is oral source, which can also indicate the development of AIDS. Oral candidiasis, herpes simplex, Kaposi's sarcoma, hair leukoplakia, enlargement of the parotid gland, gingival disorders, xerostoma, and recurring oral ulcers are among the lesions that are frequently linked to the infection. The epidemiology of a few of the oral disorders connected to HIV infection has changed with the introduction of highly active anti antiretroviral therapy. We'll be knowing more about the topic with the help of Sir. And now, before moving on to today's session, I would like to welcome Sir and would like to hand over the session to him for his precious talk to begin. Sir, over to you. Uh, thank you, Batul and IJCP, for giving me yet another opportunity to speak with you. Today, the March 20th is Oral Health Day. Oral hygiene is most important for general hygiene. If the mouth is well, everything is well. So, on this occasion, as a specialist, I would like to emphasize the various things which are associated with HIV or AIDS. HIV continues to be a major global public health issue, having claimed 40.1 million lives so far. 40 million is equivalent to four crores. So four crores of people have died from, from 1981, where, when the first case of HIV was, AIDS was <coughs> brought to uh, the world. In 2021, 6,50,000 people died from HIV-related causes and 1.5 million people acquired the disease. 6 lakhs at, in 2021, two years ago, they have died. Another 15 lakh, more than the double, have acquired the infection for the first time. There is no cure for HIV infection. However, with the increasing access to effective HIV prevention, diagnosis, treatment, and care, including for opportunities infections, HIV infection has become a manageable chronic health condition. It is a chronic manageable disease, enabling people living with HIV to live long and healthy life. Oh, I have patients over 20, 30 years <laughs> having HIV. In 1986, the first case was reported, and many of them are dying, but some of them are now even alive and healthy. There were an estimated 38.4 million people living with HIV at the end of 2021. So, four crores of people have died from of HIV, and four crores of people are living with HIV and two-thirds of whom are in the WHO African region. Africa is the worst affected uh, uh, continent or uh, thing. 
and Asia also, including India. Uh, even though we do not have alarming figures, but we do have uh, uh, HIV cases uh, with us. To reach the proposed global 95 by, uh, slash 95 slash 95, that is where 95% of the people living with HIV should be detected. Many of them now are on date, they do not know they are infected. We have to diagnose 95% of them. And we have to put uh, them on ART, anti-retroviral therapy, 95% thing. And the adherence rate should also be 95. All these people uh, should continue to take anti-retroviral drugs. We will need to redouble our efforts to avoid the worst case scenario of 7.7 .7 million HIV related deaths over the next 10 years. So 77 lakhs of people are expected to die in another 10 years. Increasing HIV infection due to HIV services disruptions due to COVID-19. So the two years of COVID has disrupted the, the war against or the fight against HIV and the slowing in public health response to HIV. Oral manifestations associated with HIV by AIDS patients. This is the topic for which we have assembled today to discuss. Oral manifestations are early and important clinical indicators of human immunodeficiency virus, that is HIV infection. Since they can occur up to 50% of HIV infected patients and in up to 80% of the patient at the AIDS stage. AIDS is a full blown stage or the final stage of HIV infection, where the CD4, the helper cells, will be less than 200. Normally, 750 to 1000 or 1200. Here, when it keeps on falling as the immunity decreases and viral load increases. So, uh, when it is less than 200, we see a lot of oral manifestation, up to 80% of them having one oral condition or other, many times all together. Oral health is related to physical and mental well-being because the presence of some lesions can compromise dental aesthetics and alter speech, switch, uh, switch chewing and swallowing, thus impacting the quality of life of patients. They, they will not be able to speak freely. They will not, they will have difficulty in chewing difficulty in swallowing, which will make their living conditions worse. For this reason, it is necessary to integrate as a part of medical treatment of HIV positive patients, the prevention, diagnosis, and control of oral health. It is essential that health professionals have the power to identify, diagnose, and treat oral pathologies through clinical characteristics, etiological agents, and risk factors, both by local and systemic approach. A diagnosis at the early stage of injury allows optimizing and prioritizing oral treatments, especially in acute pathologies such as gingivitis and necrotizing periodontal diseases. In this group of patients, the development of strategies for the prevention, control, reduction of these pathologies must be prioritized in order to reduce the morbidity and mortality in this group of patients. This is oral candidiasis. You can see the white patch on the tongue. And the other photo, you can see the white patches with the erythema uh, or the hard palate and soft palate. We cannot feel it out. So oral candidiasis is the most common oral lesions in HIV or AIDS infected patients with a wide prevalence range starting from 17% to 75%. Its most frequent culprit agents is Candida albicans. Although there are other related species such as Candida globerata, Candida tropicalis, Tropica pusi, like that, it goes on and on. The risk factor predisposing oral thrush development or CD4 or T lymphocytes less than 200 cells per milliliter. Tobacco use, wide spectrum antibiotic use of 
use or corticosteroids which result in oral dysbiosis. What we mean by dysbiosis is oral cavity contains beneficial bacteria as well as harmful bacteria. Usually the beneficial bacteria should be more and harmful bacteria should be less. Whereas the, when the, uh, in HIV, the beneficial bacteria become less and harmful bacteria becomes more and it go, uh, usually due to tobacco use, antibiotic corticosteroids and when the CD4 is less than 200. Additionally, other local conditions might favor developing these conditions, so, such as using partially removable dentures, which create a substantially acidic, moist, and aerobic environment, increasing the mucous membrane permeability, which favors the pathogen colonization capability. The next one is the decrease in the quality and quantity of the saliva or condition prone to candida infection development. The third one is malnutrition, malabsorption or deficient diet, particularly hematinic deficiencies such as iron, B12 and folic acid, which are factors that might predispose oral candidiasis via mucous membrane compromise. Oral clinical manifestations related to candida are variable and have been mainly identified in three clinical entities, pseudomembranous, that is oral thirst, I have already showed you the figure, erythematous candidiasis and angular helitis. This is erythema candidiasis. Erythema candidiasis lesions usually present as flat red lesions, commonly located on the palate or the dorsum of the tongue. The plots showing papillae or keratin loss might be formed. These lesions are usually symptomatic, accompanied by oral burning sensation or taste distortion, particularly associated with the consumption of salty or spicy, spicy meals or sour beverages. The third one is angular chelitis. The angular chelitis usually appears as fissures or linear ulcerations of the capitals and is frequently associated with the small white unilateral or bilateral patches as well as the presence of intraoral edema. Overall, 20% of the cases of this disease are caused by candida separativa, while 60% of the cases are related to mixed candida albigans and staphylococcus aureus infection. Some local predisposing factors associated with this candidiasis presentations are narrow, vertical oral dimensions, as well as aging associated highly stretchable disease. These conditions can lead to salivary contamination of, on the skin, triggering the disease. Angular chylitis can appear with or without oral candidiasis. Very dental disease. Periodontal disease shows up to in HIV infected patients with variable prevalence of 27 to 76 when the patient has AIDS. Periodontal disease encompasses a disease spectrum triggered by the complex interactions of mixed polymicrobial infections taking place in a dental biofilm while facing the host immune response, resulting in inflammation of the gums and surrounding tissues. In severe stages, the periodontal disease, the destruction of the teeth support structures, that is gum tissue, cementum, periodontal fibers, and alveolar bone can be observed. The mechanism underlying the destructive process imply direct damage owing to the dental bacterial biofilm, as well as indirect damages, secondary to the bacteriologically triggered post-immune response. The pathogens contributing to these inflammatory conditions are porphyromonas gingivalis, Prigotella intermedia, like that it goes on, Fusibacterium nucleator, and Campylobacter rectus. However, in recent years, HIV infected patients have been recognized to develop much more severe and refractory periodontal disease, which has been attributed to the involvement of multi-resistant pathogens that, such as Pseudomonas aerogenesis, Acetinobacter, 
Bomani, Ishirli Akwale, Klebsila Pneumonia, Enterobacter Fecalis, Plostridium Plostridae, as well as diverse Candida suffer. The most relevant HIV or related AIDS related periodontal disease are linear gingival erythema, chronic periodontitis, necrotizing gingivitis, and necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis. Let us see what they are. This is linear gingival erythema. This condition is considered as a form of gingivitis, which is clinically composed of a two to three millimeter erythematous streak along the gingival frame. It is commonly accompanied by diffuse red lesions or particular like wounds scattered towards the apex of the gums as well as the alveolar mucous membrane. It usually appears along the anterior teeth, usually being capable of growing towards the molars and altogether with mucus and bleeding and scarce dental biofilm. Among the representative features of this injury are clinical insert, insertion loss and absence of ulcers or pain. Multiple candida have been associated with triggering of this condition, that is linear gingival erythema. Let us see what is periodontitis. Periodontitis is characterized by microbial association within a dental biofilm as well as post-mediated inflammations, which triggers the destruction of tissue supporting the teeth. Its clinical manifestations include gum inflammation, bleeding, prone mucous membranes, periodontal pouch formation, loss of clinical insertion, block, as well as supragingival and subgingival stone formation. In severe cases, even dental displacement might develop as well as pathological dental migration. In HIV positive patients, the dental biofilm usually has a relevant microbial heterogeneity involving unusual bacteria within the oral cavity, such as Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Hmm? Uh, so many other organisms are there. The presence of these microorganisms have been correlated to antiretroviral therapy and a CD4 T lymphocyte count less than 200 cells per microliter. Some risk factors triggering the periodontitis include passive tobacco consum con cons consumption, diabetes, CD4 T lymphocyte less than 200, xerostomia, among others. Necrotizing gingivitis, we shortly call it as NG. This form of gingivitis is characterized by severe erythematous gingival tissue covered by necrotic white colored pseudomembrane, which is composed of inflammatory cells, necrotic tissue, bacteria, fibrin, ulcers with an in interproximal crater aspect, bleeding prone mucous membrane, pouch swelling breath, and pain. The teeth located on the anterior extent are the most common lesions of this disease. However, it can extend to the posterior teeth also. Additional signs and symptoms might appear as well as such as malaise, lymphadenopathy, halitosis, that is bad breath and fever. The predominant microorganisms of these conditions are pleomorphic anaerobes, such as Provitella intermedia, Fusobacterium nucleatum, plenty of spirochetes of Borrelia genus, and gram negative anaerobic bacteria as well. However, some clues lead to clinical findings representative of other species like uh, me medium, altophilum, triponym, uh, they belong to pseudospirochetes. Necrotizing periodontitis, shortly called as NP. This ailment shares same clinical manifestations of N as NG, together with acute, severe, adjacent alveolar destruction, as well as spontaneous bleeding and deep, intense pain. The loss of alveolar ridge is related to marginal necrosis, meaning that periodontal pouch formation is unlikely. On the other hand, exposed alveolar and interceptal bones are common. Most uh, NP cases are limited to a single or 
number of teeth, although they can be generalized. Its aggressiveness is characterized since it might be present in up to loss of 90% of insertion within three to six months. In HIV positive patients, the dental biofilm is composed of microorganisms like Enterococcus, Enterobacter, Klebsiella, Ceratitia. These identified risk factors for or smoking, xerostomia, and CD4 lymphocytes less than 200. This is xerostomia. You can see the, the shortening of the mouth cavity. Xerostomia is a definite, it's a subjective feeling. The patient senses within the oral cavity of poor salivation. It frequency is up to 39% in patients with CD4 lymphocytes less than 200, and 27 with CD4 lymphocytes more than 200. Xerostomia is also associated with consumption of some drugs, which include antidepressant, antiretroviral therapy, anxiolytics, oral antidiabetic agents, mainly sulfonyl ureas, respiratory agents, unine antihypertensives, such as thiazides and calcium channel blockers, urinary antispasm agent, glucosamine, NSAIDs, opioids, ophthalmologic drugs, and magnesium hydroxide. Furthermore, another predisposing factor is head and neck radiotherapy. This pathology is predominant in patients who have a CD4 T lymphocyte count less than 200, whom also have CD8 T lymphocyte proliferation within the main salivary glands, resulting in its dis destruction. Xerostomia regarding physical examination, it may be identified as a saliva scars mouth floor together with erythematous dry oral mucous and membranes and tongue, which might come along with the fissures. This ailment might develop together with the swallowing and or speaking impairment and a low sp spicy, sour or crunchy flavor threshold. Additionally, patients complaining of test distortion or trouble using dentures or trauma. Salivation impairment has been considered as a risk factor for developing caries as well as the risk of oral infections such as candidiasis and periodontal disease. It might also favor mucositis, tongue fissures, dysgeusia, speech difficulties, halitosis, oral irritation, chewing and swallowing trouble, even weight loss and cacaxi. The other condition is Kaposi's sarcoma. Kaposi's sarcoma is the most common oral HIV associated neoplasia, appearing in up to 6% of patients and has been notably decreasing due to the use of ART. This endothelial angioproliferative neoplasia is caused by human herpes virus A, which transmitted, transmitted during anal intercourse or through blood and saliva. Its pathological features may oscillate according to the location of the lesions, ganglia, mucous membrane, or skin, as well as the morphological state, patch, block, or nodule, progressing from papules which may convalesce into red pur purplish blocks, which might ulcer and cause nearby tissue destruction. Early lesion is usually flat, red, and asymptomatic. However, together with its evolution, the lesion usually develops a dark color with convergent wounds. In advanced stages, the lesions might appear as multiple firm purple nodules, which might disturb the normal mouth function and cause symptoms due to trauma or infection. The ulceration and local destruction of this entity lead to the extraction of some of the dental organs in, in some cases. It predominantly appears on the hot palate, some major salivary glands, and the jaw bone. Having a viral HIV load greater than 5,000 copies per ml is associated with risk factors. The presentive diagnosis of this neoplasia is made according to clinical characteristics. However, definite diagnosis requires 
histopathological analysis after performing a biopsy. Recurrent after ulcers. Recurrent after ulcers are the most common oral non-traumatic forms. They frequently range from 5% without ART and up to 10% on ART. The presence of these lesions is associated with CD4 lymphocytes less than 200. Their cause is yet unidentified. However, some theories have linked these lesions to an immune complex vasculitis or even to ART drugs. This ailment can be classified into minor after ulcers and major after ulcers. Minor after ulcers. These kinds of ulcers tend to appear most frequently. They usually show as a simple yet painful erythematous halo coated with a yellow grayish pseudomembrane with a diameter ranging from 2 to 5 millimeters. Its mo most common location is the non characterized oral mucous membrane, typically lingering from 7 to 10 days, healing later without scarring. This is major after ulcers. These kinds of ulcers are generally observed in severely immunosuppressed AIDS patients, CD4 less than 100. These injuries appear as craters with elevated borders covered with white yellowish pseudomembrane assuring between 1 and 5 centimeters in diameter. These ulcers generally appear on the lateral border of the tongue, soft palate, mouth floor, oral mucous membrane, and oropharynx, including both keratinized and non keratinized mucous surfaces. Ulcers of this kind are remarkably painful, particularly while consuming salty, spicy, sour, and hot or rough foods and beverages. They may be last two weeks causing dysphagia, trouble speaking, chewing, and developing an induration on their borders and leaving refractive fiber scars after healing. Oral hairy leukoplakia. Oral hairy leukoplakia has a lower prevalence among the HIV positive patients without ART compared to patients on ART. Its appearance is common during the fourth decade of life, especially in the male population. This lesion is caused by Epstein-Barr virus infection, though it is also associated with fungal microbes, usually the candida. It often appears as well-limited white lesion on the of variable appearance, trans, transitioning from a flat lesion to a growing papillary process, similar to hair. Mm, they do not show hairs, but the historical picture resembles to that of hair. Unlike candidiasis, it cannot be scraped off from the mucous surfaces. It commonly appears on the lateral borders of the tongue, by or unilateral. And however, it might extend to tongue's dorsum and mouth flow. In some conditions, it can appear on the oropharyngeal mucosa. Its entity is associated with low CD4 T lymphocytes count, tobacco use, as well as topical and systemic corticosteroid use. Oral hyperpigmentation. You can see the hyperpigmentation. Oral hyperpigmentation appears in up to 37% of the patients who have a CD4 lymphocyte less than 100 cells. The cause of this condition remains unknown, though it has been associated with ART, particularly zidovidin, thymidine analog reverse transcriptase inhibitors. Other drugs such as clofazimin, ketoconazole have also been associated among others. Oral hyperpigmentation manifests as black or maroon papules associated with intraleukocytic melanin or pigments within the basal cell membrane or lamina propria with premature metasomas. It can show up, up anywhere on oral mucosal membranes. According to the reports, HIV positive patients are more frequently related to illicit drugs use compared to the general population. Methamphetamine use has been to developing dental disease, which might be relevant. These patients can show up to precarious oral hygiene, xerostomia, hypochromic lip conditions, lateral sides of the cheek and palate, 
accompanied by rampant caries, the so-called med source, aside from grinding related excessive dental wasting. Oral herpes virus. Oral wounds associated with human herpes simplex type 1 virus appear normally. They affect 20% of HIV positive patients. Recurrent intraoral outbreaks due to HSV infection begin as multiple fragile group papules and vesicles with a diameter short than 3 millimeters. These lesions fragment themselves to generate tiny and painful ulcers. Most of the lesions appear on the keratinized or partially keratinized mucous membranes like lips, heart palate, and gums. These wounds are self-limited, disappearing within 7 to 30 days, although leaving a, a scar. They are linked to CD4 lymphocytes less than 100 cells per day. Oral wart. The prevalence of oral mucous membrane and skin warts caused by multiple subtypes of human papillomavirus is about 4.6%. This value has been increasing within the ART era. As punishment studies have suggested drugs or combination of ART drugs might be the risk factor for HPV oral infection development. These wounds show up the papules or solid elevated nodules with a cauliflower or wheat-like appearance, flat with the pedicure. This is caries, dental caries, which all of us are familiar. Dental caries is considered the most common oral disease in HIV-positive patients, such as prevalence reported, reported to 54 to 83 percent. It is it's a multifactorial disease triggered by the interactions of dental biofilm, skin surface, sugary diets, and most and host vulnerability. Bacteria on the biofilm involved in caries onset and progression, mainly the streptococcus, lactobacillus, hmm? thereby producing oral substance that decompose enamel and dentin. Caries that affect one or multiple dental surfaces. However, studies on the clinical characteristics and behavioral patterns of dental caries among the HIV patients are scarce. Raze Sophie et al. showed in the study significant difference in the number of caries surfaces, including roots and crowns, crowns in HIV positive patients compared to the HIV negative patients. However, the prevalence of good caries is not significantly different between the two groups. Additionally, it has been suggested that the severity of dental caries increases significantly with age and duration of ART. With, within the recent years, it has been suggested that candida albicans might increase the caries development in patients who have HIV or AIDS, considering its capability to produce lactic acid through carbohydrate fermentation and hydroxypatite dental structures, degeneration process, processes, which is complicated with greater severity and progression of caries development. On the other hand, saliva has been as an essential role in preventing dental caries development due to, anti, due to its antibacterial and antifungal properties. It also possesses pH buffering features within the oral cavity through biocarbonate and phosphate. As well, it provides necessary calcium and phosphate substrates to maintain dental enamel integrity. Lastly, saliva is also capable of producing antibodies. HIV infiltration, CD4, 8 lymphocyte proliferation within the salivary glands, as well as antiretrovirus decrease. The quality and quantity of the salivary flow and modify the normal oral cavity microbe. For this reason, they are considered as main risk factors of dental caries development in HIV positive patients. Adding to the already mentioned predisposing factors, Suboptimal oral hygiene, tobacco use, drugs, periodontal disease, and a carbohydrate rich diet are relevant factors leading to substantial dental caries development in this population. So, <clears throat> these dental conditions, all the dentists or ENT surgeons would have already seen. What, 
makes them to suspect HIV is they do not <coughs> keep as per the uh, treatment protocol which is being followed in HIV negative patient. For HIV positive patient, it has to be prolonged and it uh, yeah, anti-retroviral drugs has to be added. Then only it does. So what to do? Suppose if you are suspecting HIV in, the, in your patient, what you have to do is to do pre-test counseling and take the and get the informed consent before doing or prescribing the blood test. See, in blood, HIV being a social uh, and other implications are there only with pre-test counseling uh, and informed consent. What we mean by pre-test counseling is, do you know about HIV or AIDS? Do you know how HIV or AIDS spreads from one person to another person? Do you have any of those risk factors with you? If so, we may be have to test for HIV. So the test we do is the heart test or an instant test, rapid test. If it is negative, the person does not have HIV. If it is positive, we cannot declare as positive. We have to do one more test, preferably with ELISA, by ELISA method. The Western blot method is out, outdated and many of the centers are not doing. Uh, ELISA has made the process simple. And we have PCR test also. So the test will be done. And if it is possible, positive, then anti, we, were, we used to do CD4 crop to assess the prognosis and in what state they are in there. And commence the ART, whatever be the CD4 cells. As the viral load increases, the CD4 decreases. Once we commence these antiretroviral drugs, the viral load will decrease and CD4 will gradually in, increase. To conclude, due to the advent of antiretrovirals, lifespan prolongation has been achieved for people living with HIV. So it is a chronic manageable disease. We have people, even, for, even after acquiring the disease 20 years or 30 years before, they are alive and healthy. The presence of oral disease can have a relevant negative impact on the quality of life of these patients. As previously mentioned, oral health is strongly associated with physical and mental health. Therefore, integral care of these patients must include the observation, detection, and treatment of oral pathologies, which can be complex and diverse. And that on many occasions could represent a challenge for the clinicians due to the development of more than a single disease in individual patients. None of these lesions described is exclusive for HIV or AIDS patients. However, all of them present higher prevalence, severity, and progression in comparison to HIV negative patients, especially low CD4 T lymphocyte count, and in some cases associated with the use of ART. These group of Oral disease manifestation have been defined and linked to HIV disease according to the severity and clinical presentation. That is group one. These oral lesions are strongly associated with HIV or AIDS and are composed of seven kinds of lesions. Oral candidiasis, hairy leukoplakia, Kaposi's sarcoma, linear gingival erythema, necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis, necrotizing ulcer ulcerative periodontitis, and non arteries lymphoma. Group two, this group includes atypical ulcers, the salivary gland disease, viral infection such as cytomegalovirus infection, herpes simplex virus, papilloma virus, and herpes zoster virus. Group three, in this group includes lesions rather than those in group one and two, such as squamous cell carcinoma, and diffuse osteomyelitis. Given the uh, first mentioned statement, it is relevant to remove barriers within the oral health care for people living with HIV or AIDS, considering the optimal and integral care as a goal.
thank you. Uh, so, since it is only an half an hour lecture, I have gone through the text rapidly. And <clears throat> you can share the slides from the website and uh, build up your information about the oral relations. If there is any doubt, I will like to ask. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for your wonderful insight and uh, for sharing such wonderful insights with our audience regarding such an important topic on this uh, on this World Oral Health Day. We have received few questions, sir. With all your due permission, I would like to put it across to you. The first question is, which is considered the preferred therapy for initial treatment of oral candidiasis? <clears throat> If, if it is mild, we can use local clotrimazole uh, oral gel. Oral gel is available. So clotrimazole oral gel is there. But I prefer systemic usage of uh, thing, preferably fluconazole. Right? Uh, because apart from tongue where the clotrimazole uh, can be applied, uh, if it is extending to, into the esophagus, it will not be possible to apply. So fluconazole is, is the ideal usage, and we use a 100 milligram stack daily uh, thing, maybe two to three weeks. And as the symptoms subside, many times uh, after endoscopy, hmm, only the uh, esophageal candidiasis has been brought to light. Many times the for well, white coating of the tongue is ignored. Mm -hmm. So, uh, fluconazole is the thing. Now we have, we have itraconazole also mm -hmm. to that. Uh, so, uh, these drugs are possible. The previous graciophalbine, which we are using it for trichophyton, epidermophyton, they are not affected here. Only the uh, Fluconazole and itraconazole, they are effective, effective. And we can go for the statin and other things also. Thank you so much for answering this question. We'll move to the next question that we have received. And this question is, which viral pathogens is the most likely cause of oral carcinoma for the patient who never chewed tobacco or smoked? I, I told you on the oh, oh, uh, human papilloma virus and herpes simplex virus, mm, they, they, they are carcinogenic, the lesions, they can turn into cancers. And we see the cancers preventing vaccines, uh, which we often use in gynecology uh, patients to prevent Carcinoma cervix is prepared from human papilloma virus. Various types are there, so they, they may prepare this. And so human papilloma virus is the most risky factor. And nowadays, herpes simplex also. That is why we, <coughs> we uh, uh, told you homosexuals, uh, oral uh, sex and other things, they have to be the... Uh, a person has to use the condom and then only indulge in oral sex. Never consider oral sex as safe. Thank you so much, sir, for answering this question. We'll move to the next question and the last question for today's session. And the question is, what types of oral candidiasis present in the patient who has erythema and splitting at the corner of his mouth, as well as flat erythematous patches on the heart palate? So it is the candida albicans is the most common thing when we take when we take it and uh, uh, and uh, add NOH and see things we can see the hyphae and pseudo hyphae. So there are new uh, subtypes of candida things when because of the the development of better diagnostic facilities, we are able to see the uh, rare, rare and new types of chlamydia. Commonly, it is the uh, chlamydia al albicans. When it is uh, this one, the things are pretty well. 
Thank you so much, sir, for answering all the questions and for giving out your valuable time. I would also like to thank all the viewers who have joined our platform and uh, who have shown their ardent participation throughout this session. So thanks to all of them. At the outset, I would also to thank you, sir, for taking out your valuable time and for being here at our platform and sharing your insights with all the doctors who are present yeah. here with us yeah. and all the viewers who have Definitely. watched. Uh, today being World Health Day, it is the duty of the doctors even if the patients come for some other ailment, uh, kindly examine the mouth. A torch like, uh, like thrown into the uh, mouth, the open mouth of the patients will bring out so many things into limelight and we can advise them and prevent the progression of the oral uh, conditions. And uh, especially the, the children who are very, uh, anxious or eager to have these chocolates and other sweets. Mm, you, you know, many of the organisms multiply in things. So <clears throat> we have to ad advise them, if not avoid sweets, they have to clean the teeth even in the evening before going to bed. So this will prevent the caries and other conditions. So twice cleaning is essential and, and the most of the toothpaste advertisement, they make the people public, eligible public, to have a long strip of toothpaste from beginning to end of the brush. It is not that much required at all. If we, what we require is only across the brush, the pea size, peanut, peanut or size paste is sufficient. So, <clears throat> So if they use half in the morning and half in the thing, they need not buy another toothpaste tube. We with the same toothpaste tubes they are uh, purchasing for the month, they can clean the teeth twice a day. What is required is <coughs> good brushing and foam wash. Thank you so much, sir, for your valuable comment. And I hope that uh, the doctors and the viewers who have watched our session must have gained the knowledge that they were here for. So with all your concluding remarks, we can conclude the session here for today, sir. Uh, thank you, Bhattu. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Wish you all a healthy oral. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye.